How's it going, guys? Uh, I'm going to be super quick because YouTube, for some reason, keeps crashing on me around the five-minute mark, uh, and I don't have my actual microphone on me, so my computer might cut out because it's terrible. Uh, so I'm going to run through this super fast. Um, out of all the games we were playing this week, uh, the ones I chose to work on the most were Hotline Miami and Audio Surf. Uh, I played a little bit of Limbo, too. I played Limbo in the, in the past, but... Um, uh, Hotline Miami and Audio Surf, I thought were the most fun and best ones to talk about. Um, Hotline Miami is awesome. I am really excited. I'm actually downloading Hotline Miami 2 right now for my PS3. Um, uh, the game is very intuitive. Uh, it's pretty easy to figure out exactly what you're doing. They give you the controls right off the bat. Um, you're a sociopathic killer. You are a crazy person, maybe an assassin. Um, I see. I see you as a like a serial killer type uh, in the game, and it's very interesting because it's constant fighting, moving, and dying pretty much throughout the entire game. Um, quick replay. The game is constantly making you think about your um, your strategy, who to kill, when to kill them, um, how fast you have to go through a level. Um, I mean, it has a pretty good system of feedback because every enemy you kill has a, uh, is worth points, and sometimes the more brutal the kill, the more points you get out of it. So I, I feel like it covers a lot of rules pretty, pretty well. As far as the visual and audio aspects of the game, uh, I think they're stunning. I think the visual aspect of the game uh, moves very well with how the game is supposed to be played. The game takes place in the, the late 80s, early 90s, and... Uh, looks like games would look like then, except, you know, high definition and extremely more vibrant colors. And the audio of the game, not necessarily fitting for the time, but I feel like the music in that game is just as essential as the gameplay. It has one of my favorite soundtracks. I was immediately drawn in the second I was listening to it and playing it. Um, I that's actually one of the reasons why I want to keep playing the game is because I think the music is so good and I want to hear what the next song is going to be in the next level. And I think that's very encouraging and uh, allows the, the the player to want to keep going for, uh, further. Uh, so the next game I played was Audio Surf. Um, I'm actually surprised that it's, it cost $10. I used to play that game a lot a couple of years ago, three, four years ago, um, and it was free, easy to download. Um, Audio Surf is awesome. It, the, the rules aren't clearly lined out for you, but it's such a basic game that you figure it out at, at least within the first minute, if not, if not sooner. Um, collect the, uh, the colored blocks and avoid the gray ones, and if you build up enough blocks, you can get more points at a time and create combos and multipliers. So it's got a system of feedback, and it's got... It's got game, or it's got uh, a good point system to keep you playing and encourage you to to continue on through the game and continue on through the track. It's um it's visually appealing. It's got lots of lasers and neon colors and <clears throat> and stuff coming at you constantly. But it is an audio based game, and one of my favorite parts about it is that you can bring your own audio into the game. And uh, I feel like that's kind of where I burnt myself out, actually, because I started putting so much of my own music into the game that I started to realize how many flaws that were that were actually a part of it, such as um, the biggest flaw is if you miss a track, in my opinion, uh, the music doesn't stop or a certain track doesn't stop, you just lose points. And I feel like it'd be a little more encouraging if the music stopped or something happened when you did actually miss points in the game. Um, but other than that, I feel like it... It does a very good job of laying everything out for the user, even though it's not extremely blatant. It's it's your arrow keys, so you, you figure that out almost immediately. Uh, as far as the Magic Circle goes, the game I want to talk about would be Dark Souls 2. I've been playing that a lot recently. I just went and bought it for the second or third time uh, this past week. Um, I feel like Dark Souls 2 or Dark Souls or Demon Souls, any of those games, are pretty a pretty good example of the magic circle they the, the the hardest games i've ever played they almost aren't fun until you figure out the strategy and figure out the circle there is there's enemies laid all over the place and 
if you mess up one thing, maybe two things, you're dead and the game is over and you have to restart and collect your points again. And it's extremely frustrating. The The purpose of the game is to piss off the player and to just beat you into the ground and show you that you're not good at video games. Uh, it's got a point system. You kill enemies and you receive souls uh, on the on the enemy's behalf and you use those souls to level up and that's very rewarding and encouraging and that's a good system of feedback um, it does provide the one thing that if you do die you only have one chance to reclaim your souls and reclaim your points if you lose those souls and points you start over from scratch and that's where the game becomes insanely frustrating because that's the point of the game is just to beat you down and make you not win um, so you have to do a lot of studying through every level. You have to figure out what enemy does what when. You get this close to this enemy on this side. He has three attacks that do this. Or, you know, you approach an enemy from the front. He has two attacks that do this. So you have to constantly be forming a strategy, even though it's very repetitive and you keep dying. You have to constantly, like, update your strategy and figure out what works best for getting past this enemy without, without dying. So... I feel like that game is really good with the Magic Circle because it does bring everything... It, it It's kind of repetitive, but at the same time, it keeps such a rewarding aspect around it because if you do win, if you do not die and actually kill a boss and get through the game, it might take you forever and it might be insanely frustrating, but I've never felt more rewarded with a game than when I've actually defeated a boss in Dark Souls 2. And that's what keeps me playing the game. I... The, the very first Dark Souls that came out was called Demon Souls. It came out about six or seven years ago. Um, is the only game I've ever quote-unquote rage quit on. And I actually broke a controller playing it because I spent about six hours on a, a 30 minute or a 30 second long segment of a very small boss fight that shouldn't have been that hard. But the game wants you to lose and wants you to not, not be a good gamer. And you want to prove that game wrong. And... That's why I don't play the first one anymore, and the the third one, Demon Souls 2, is a little more forgiving, and I, I enjoy it a lot because of that. Um, and I think that pretty much wraps up what this was going for, so hopefully I covered everything. Uh, I've almost hit the 8-minute mark, and I haven't been closed out yet, so I'm going to close out now, and hopefully I've got my point across. All right, have a good night.